Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. Jillian writes in. Jillian writes, hey, Tom, I'm 18. And I'm in my senior year of high school. I'm writing because I've been listening to your show for about three days now. There are things I agree with and things that I don't, but that's besides the point. I hear girls all the time saying the following. Here's two quotes she hears all the time. One is, my boyfriend is waiting until I'm ready. The other one is, why can't I find a guy who isn't all about sex? I think that it was uh, Friday on your show. You were talking about how guys always want sex. And if he isn't getting it from the girl he is with, he'll get it somewhere else. I agree, says Jillian. And hell, why shouldn't they? Why should they put up with the waiting? There's no point on it. She said point of it. No point in it. It would be nice if we could play your show in the halls at school so that these naive bitches could learn a thing or two. Signed, Jillian. P.S. says Jillian, props to you. Now, you see, this is something I've been uh, telling you girls, and I'm, <laughs> I'm glad that Jillian is... Uh, is aware and uh, realistic. We uh, did a show about this recently, and uh, I'm still getting emails from clueless women in denial, believing that uh, the minute they've gone on a date or a couple of dates, they've got an exclusive relationship, and that the boyfriend will wait as long as she desires before he finally gets what he wants, and that she is the one and only source of sex. And that she will uh, decide when he gets it. And in fact, she loses respect for him. I mean, that line, my boyfriend is waiting until I'm ready, is just bragging. It's just bragging. It's women saying they've got the magic vagina. It's women saying they've, uh, they've got it all together. I'm so good, he's waiting for me. But he's not. And we don't. I can't tell you how many times uh, I've had women believing that um, they just hold out long enough. And I'll be so in love, there'll be no other place for me to get sex. And in fact, I want to make this really clear. I haven't made it clear on the program before. I'm sure I'm not the only guy who feels this way. To me, sex is all about chemistry, the heat of the moment, passion, desire. And um, not just the heat of the moment, but the spur of the moment. Like, if you're hot for somebody, you want to pounce on them. Now, I can't speak for everybody else. But every time a woman plays this game, maybe I'm not ready yet, maybe I don't know you well enough yet, and they start going through that, and you know they're just doing it as a game, I start losing interest. I do. I start losing interest. I've had women who finally, when they were ready to give it up, my attitude was, that's okay. I, like, I've waited so long, it's like, you know what? It can't be any good. If you want to make me wait this long, you obviously aren't that interested. Or you're obviously trying to control me in some way. And as a result, I'm losing interest in you. Now, have I dated women who've made me wait? Absolutely. I've told the story on the air about a woman who made me wait six months By the way, I never had sex with her. After the six months, we'd gone on a cruise. She's the one I told you about who was drop-dead, unbelievably beautiful. 
And uh, I'd already stopped seeing her, and then she found out that I was going on a cruise, and I had an extra ticket because that was my compensation for doing a listener cruise. And I was about to return the ticket and try to get some cash instead, and she said, no, 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 I'll go with you. And I told her, it's, uh, it's one bed, it's one cabin. You don't get your own cabin. That's okay. And long story short, she, uh, she looked smoking hot when we were walking around the ship. But then when it was time to go to bed, she wore the equivalent of a burlap sack and uh, faced away from me. All I saw was her back with the uh, flannel nightgown, whatever she was wearing. It was like, well, good night. Seven nights in a row. She ultimately told me she had read a book. And even though she was not a virgin, this book recommended that she uh, hold out until marriage if she wants to get married. Which was even more insulting because there were all these other guys who got in, lickety split. And I, who was seen as marriage material, I would have to wait while others didn't. Now, guys, you have got to start thinking this way, okay? Just about, and again, exceptions to the rule, don't bother calling in, okay? Because I know there's three or four of you out there. But um, just about every woman who ever says, I don't sleep with guys on the first day. I don't do that. They've done it with somebody else. They've done it with the high school quarterback. They've done it with the homecoming king. They've done it with uh, an actor, uh, a singer, a rock star. They've done it with... Um, Poets, they've done it uh, with uh, famous people of any kind. Radio talk show hosts, whatever. But you, you are going to have to wait. Doesn't that insult you? Aren't you insulted when a woman says that? I mean, I had one woman I had to wait for one time uh, tell me that uh, ultimately... Oh, yeah, she'd been with a Hall of Fame baseball player who gave her the old talk about, come over to my place. And when, when she got there, there was no place to sit down. Oh, I just moved in. Here, the only flat space is my bed. So she hopped right in. And hopped right in and acted like, oh, I didn't know that was going to happen. I couldn't believe it happened. I couldn't believe You know, come on. All these women who want to appear to be good girls, it, it's all about appearance, boys. The reality is, when they tell you you're going to have to wait, someone else didn't have to wait. I especially enjoy when it's a single mother. Ever uh, run into a single mother like this? Who suddenly is a prude? And now that she's a mother, she's a prude. She was a complete slut. That's how she got knocked up. But now that she's a mother, she's a, she's a prude. There's a lot of that out there. But I think the girls are uh, really living in a dream world, believing that uh, we're waiting for them to be ready. And especially the idea that we're not all about sex. When we first meet you, all we know about is your sexuality. That's all we know about. And we're checking you out. And we're imagining having sex with you. It's, it's not for any other reason. We're not, it's not because we're pigs. It's not because we're stupid. It's not because we only think with one head and not the other. All the reasons you girls love to give. The reason is we know nothing else about you. We are visually stimulated and we are seeing a hot piece of ass and we are viscerally reacting to it. Look up viscerally, you idiot. We are all all about sex with very few exceptions and come on if catholic priest diddling altar boys doesn't tell you that we're pretty much all like that guess again when you say no to us we get it somewhere else that's it and you boys who sit waiting i don't understand you at all you're stupid if you're doing it and frankly i don't think there's a lot of you out there am i wrong tom like this 1-800-5800-TOM 1-800-5800-866. The radio woman on the radio getting the same ratings that you're getting. She doesn't deserve to get paid the same. I'm not talking. Well, put it this way. No woman gets the ratings I get. The Tom Likey Show. <laughs> This is Max 
Next on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello? Is that a question or a statement, Max? Uh, well, actually, uh, a statement. Um, I'm listening in my car, and I could just had to call in and uh, make a comment about, uh, you know, about these girls who want to make guys wait. Yeah. Um, first of all, I just want to say that any guy who waits has got to be a fool because it is absolutely not worth it. And uh, I started seeing this girl about three weeks ago. Uh, she was a senior at ASU, and get this, try telling me that she's only been with one other guy, right? And uh, took her out a couple times, and, you know, we're at my place, and, you know, we started hooking up, and then she stops me talking about, no, um, I want to get to know you, and, you know, telling me that I had to wait. So I look at her like, you know, that that's not going to fly. So I pull out my phone, and I call somebody else, Right in front of her. Her, her. her jaw drops to the ground, okay? And she heard every single word that I said, and the girl that I had called, I told her, I said, hey, you know, what are you doing tonight? Well, I'm going to be around your way, so how about me and you getting together? No problem, right? So I looked at her, and she's all like, I can't believe you just did that. I said, well, hey, look, honey, it's either going to be you or somebody else, <laughs> you know? That's right. And uh, I said, well, I'll tell you what. Let's go ahead and get you home. I stand up. She grabs me by the arm, and she's talking about, oh, well, don't be like this. I really like you, da 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 And I said, hey, you know what? Talk is cheap, you know? Bottom line is she let me end up getting in there about, I'd say, less than 10 minutes later. Now she won't stop calling me. She wants to come over every night. She wants me to take her here, take her there. Well, guess what, Tom? Now she waits. <laughs> I don't know if I know you well enough to take you out to dinner. <laughs> right. Well, I just had to share that with you, Tom, and I love your show, man. Love that, Max. Thank you for that. Wow. Love that. More guys ought to do that. When she tells you you have to wait, just pick up your cell phone. Call one of the other girls on the list, for God's sake. <laughs> Tina on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello. Yes. Okay. So here's the deal. The guy that just said that any guy that waits is a fool is totally stupid. Sorry, but... Um, no, no, he's not. Okay, I apologize. He's not stupid. He probably is a very intelligent person. He's smart. No, my boyfriend waited for me. You don't know that. No, he didn't wait to have sex for me, but he waited for me to be ready. Yeah, but meanwhile he was having sex with whoever else... <laughs> Including unspeakable pigs who uh, are waiting for his call at 11.30 at night. Oh, he well, was with me every night. No. Oh, well, he wasn't with you 24 hours a day. When he wasn't with me, he was at work. That's what he told you. <laughs> no, he was I guarantee you he was getting his uh, sexual needs taken care of. No, he's just not a very sexual person. He's not a very sexual person. Correct. So, in other words, the sex wasn't even worth waiting for. Well, no, it was. I'm I'm the one that's like, anytime, anywhere, you name it, let's go. He's the one that's like, oh, not tonight, I have a headache. Why would you want to be with somebody like that if you're so sexual? I have no idea. I, like, it's, there's so many other... All right, so in other words, the reason he waited for you is not because he loves you. The reason he waited for you is because he could do with a, without sex. He doesn't really care. Well, now, okay, so I can see how it would seem like that. That's how it is. But he really, I mean... He loves me in so many other ways. Mm, that so many other ways. Focus. Which means you'll be having an affair uh, probably in the next five years with somebody never, who does like sex. In a million years. I sure, would never in a million years. No, not you. I really wouldn't. Sure you wouldn't. Ah. Dear, you're 22 years old. Right. and I You know. don't know what you will do. I, I know that I would... You I don't know that. No choice that I have made. That if I'm ever to the... Darling, I got married at 18. Right. And I thought that I was with this person for life and that I would never, I ever be with anybody else. I'm not talking about that. I'm saying I thought we were going to be together happy forever after. Okay. I believed that. All right. And then the truth came out later, as it will with you. And it very well might, and I'm not denying that, but what I'm saying is that I'm not going to cheat. I would divorce the person first. You don't even know that. Oh. It's a it's a personal thing. Like I know myself well enough to know that. No, you don't. Ah, you're 22, dear. Right. Yes, all kinds of things. Where do your hormones kick in, dear? <laughs> Listen, it has nothing to do with you. Make a choice. Oh yes, sure. It has nothing to do with it. All right. Your hormones. Obviously, dear, you're a little immature, but you'll find out. 
Oh, my goodness. No, it's a personal choice. You don't think people are accountable for their actions. They choose what they do or not. Uh, by the way, they choose what they do based on their feelings and their experiences, their lack of experiences. And no matter what you think today, things change. Definitely. There's totally things agree. you believed five years ago that you don't believe today. Of course. That's and there are things you believe today person. that you will not believe in five years. And that is, could very well be one of them. And it frequently is for people there. I just, I don't see that. About so you think all the people who have affairs at 30, they all knew at 22 or 18 that they were going to do that? No, but those, That's my point. Those, those morals that they built in themselves weren't, like, rock hard. Those are, there are certain Here, things in your life. First of all, you talk about morals. I mean, uh, are you religious? Um, I used to be very religious. What yes. happened then? Um, it just, my beliefs changed. So now you're not religious? I'm... Oh, I hate to say this because it sounds so cliche, but I'm more spiritual. Like, I have my beliefs, right. but there's not... So, in other words, you wanted to have sex with your boyfriend, so you decided uh, you had to dial no. it down. It was before I even met him that I changed. Uh, I see. <laughs> all right, dear. Well, again, at 22, you don't know half of what you're going and to I'm know. And I'm not denying that at all. Which includes the possibility that uh, once you meet somebody after you've had so little experience, and once you meet somebody who's closer to your sex drive, and once your sex drive steps up to the next level, which it always does, uh, that uh, you what you believe today may not be what you believe in five, six, seven years. And I'm not saying that, but there are, like, Tom, okay, here's an example. Would you would you ever sleep with a man? Ever? I don't know. I, I don't think so. Oh. I don't think so. <laughs> no, you wouldn't. Are you kidding? But not because of morality. Right, and this is not necessarily a morality issue. But there are things that do not seem appealing to you and never have and probably never ever but dear, will. Dear, dear, the, the point is I'm 49 years old and by now I know what appeals to me and what doesn't. Right. And the fact is when I got married at 18, I thought I would never, never ever have an affair. Ever. Why did you have an affair? Because I needed it. And you chose to do that, correct? I chose to fulfill my needs. Right. You make a choice. It's not like... Well, and you may make a choice too to fulfill your needs. Let me give you an example, Tina. You know, every day you eat three meals a day. Uh -huh. and, and you eat most of your meals at home. Okay. One day the refrigerator is empty, so you order a pizza. All right. All right. Now, normally you eat all your meals at home. And frankly, you'd prefer to eat all your meals at home. You're not concerned. But every That's once in a while there's nothing in the refrigerator and you have to punt. Now, if you have your boyfriend with the low sex drive, uh -huh. who does what most people with low sex drives eventually do, they have less and less sex with you. Okay. And you are less and less fulfilled. But you love him, and you don't know how to say goodbye to him. You may change your point of view on this, as don't millions of people do. I didn't say you're never getting laid, dear. No, I'm, I'm saying it's But if he's like already got a low sex drive at this age, you can only imagine how much worse it's going to get. Well, remember. Once a week. It's at least. It's not like. Once you know, a week. I know. There. Let me tell you For something. some people, that works, though. Let me. But not you. But I'm. There are. I mean, in a relationship, you have to sacrifice. And that's one of those there, things. There. No, I no. Mean. No. If you're with the right person, you don't have to sacrifice. That's not realistic. That's no, not it right. is real. Dear, I'm telling you, as someone who used to believe what you believe and learn by experience. Anytime you have to compromise and compromise and compromise with somebody, it means you picked wrong. Just because you have to, com but who's saying I have to compromise and compromise and compromise? You have a high sex drive, and you are with someone with a low sex drive. Right, but that's just sex once a week. You're 22, and by the way, dear, the first six months of a relationship are the gold standard. It only goes downhill oh, in bed. I've been so for once. Four years. I mean, I know that. So, so what were you getting it twice a week in the beginning? No, I mean, it's always been pretty consistent. Once a week. I mean, obviously, when we first started, you know, it was more because I had never done it before and he was all excited, so. Oh, so this is the only person you've ever been with. Right. I knew I shouldn't have told you. Okay. I knew you were so going to put that one out. There, it's so <laughs> obvious what's going to happen here. And the only person who doesn't know is you, and that's fine because you're going to find out. I just, and you know what, I'm, like I said, I'm not saying that he's. For sure. When you realize what life. you've missed, when yeah. you find a man with a 14-inch personality who can take you into a room with a hot tub for three days and never come out for air, and you realize that uh, as opposed to Poindexter at home who gives it to you once a week at best, reluctantly, oh, when you goodness. see the difference, dear, you might have a different point of view.
and I know you think you know better, but you were a I'm virgin not, when you met this guy. You right, know nothing not about nothing. I know better. I'm not saying that I know better. By the way, how many women had he been with before you? Um, I don't know. I don't, that was was he things. he a virgin too? No. God, no. How do you know? I, I know that much because I know someone. Because he's that, that good in the sack. I'm sorry? He's not that good in the sack. I Come didn't on. I your question. I said, was he that good in the sack? Yes, he's very good. Oh, yeah. That, that, I, that, I, that, I, that, I like no like the sack. locust that comes out every 13 years. The, what are they? The cicadas, right? <laughs> They're right. 17 years. Right, 17 years. Right. It's like that. They're real good at, uh, at making that noise every 17 years, but what good is that? But it's, like I said, it, it oh my goodness. Okay. He's a sexual cicada. <laughs> I hope not, because 17 years is a long ass Phoenix time. is filled with cicadas. <laughs> no. The thing well, is... yes, it is. I live there. I know. Once a week is, is, is something I'm okay with. Uh, like, would I like it more? Yeah, of course I would. I'm, whatever, I'm 22 years old. But dear, what you don't know... Hmm. Is that when you turn 25 and then 30, your needs increase. His won't. How do you know? <laughs> Dear, I'm 49. I've been with women 25, 30, hey, 35, that's just 40. Your personal experience. That is everybody's personal experience who is my age. We've been with them at every stage in the game. Okay. And I'm telling you, Tina. When you hit 30, it's not part it's partly in some way I'm sure related to the biological time clock every talk everybody talks about you're going to be more horny when you hit 30. Write it down. I don't read know a, that's read funny. a book about sex dear. It's in there. I don't know if that's possible, but okay. Read a book about sex. <laughs> read one. Joy of sex. Read read a book about sex, which I'm sure you've never done. Actually, I have. Which book did you read? It's um <laughs> Not died by Dr. Robert Schuler or by uh, by Billy Graham. I'm talking about a real hardcore book about <laughs> sex. Okay, so you're right. Read a real book. Women okay. women are out of their minds at 30, and they have needs. Right, but when he stops meeting those needs, then it'll be a different story. Uh, dear, I'm telling you, when that big strapping pizza man comes over, because there's nothing in your refrigerator... <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you, one day, you're going to come out in a negligee to pick up that pie. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. All women are whores, okay? No, and your I don't boyfriend, know. yes, your boyfriend is queer for peer no. and gay for pay, okay? <laughs> the Tom Likas Show. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. Yeah, we're talking about an email we got from Jillian in Phoenix. Who um, hears girls in her high school all the time saying, "My boyfriend is waiting till I'm ready," or "Why can't I find a guy that isn't all about sex?" We're all about sex. All of us, with a few exceptions. And uh, nobody's boyfriend is waiting till you're ready, dear. We just got to get somewhere else. As I've been telling you, one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. It's Brad on the Tom Likas show. Hey Tom, how you doing? Great. I'm glad you dropped your age to the caller a little while back. That way, I know you and I are about the same age. We've been walking this planet about the same amount of time. But I got to get you to do me a favor. You got to stop using the word "we" all the time. No, I don't. You know, I don't think you speak for absolutely every guy that's out there. I never said I speak for absolutely every guy. There are pussies. There are mama's boys. There are guys who are whipped. Uh, there are a certain amount of those out there, and I have a feeling you're one of them. But uh, generally speaking, this is how we men feel. Is it, or is it just the way we've been programmed since about the age of... Well, uh, no doubt bombarded. you were raised by a single mother, or your dad wasn't around the house very much. Uh, but I can tell you that, uh, in general, uh, that is how men feel. Because that's how we've been programmed. We've bombarded really? and bombarded on the media. So your parents are, are still together, are they? Yeah, my parents are still together, and my dad's a cop, and that's not an unmacho. Really? Uh huh. Yeah. Well, uh, all but, I all I can say to you is, how did you turn out to be such a pussy? I'm not a pussy. Oh, sure you I, are. Oh, come on. There's more. There's more. This is how we've been programmed. That is feminist rhetoric, if I've ever heard it. 
Well, this isn't a feminist talking to you. Uh, all, when you say we've been programmed Not this way... every guy out there is totally led around No by. one used the word every. You did. I said not every guy is led around by it. Uh, again, you can't use that word on the air. I don't know if you've heard about something called the federal government. Okay. This is the radio. Then he's not governed by his lower quadrant. Is that acceptable? Yes. Yes, it is. All right. Yeah. But as, as long as there's, there's, and I'll use the Most word. of us are. Well, I don't know. Maybe I'm just getting old on this earth. But it seems Could more be. More guys I'm talking uh, to. Maybe just because you're a member of the Cialis crowd doesn't mean most of us aren't like this. It's not the Cialis crowd. You're making a lot of assumptions here. Well, again, most of us are governed by our genitalia. Well, I think if you step into the three-digit IQ crowd and get away from the baseball hats and the knuckle drivers, you're going to find that's not quite as true. Actually, you're going to find it's very true. I happen to believe that there is some kind of primal instinct. It is the reason men create art. It is the reason men try to become billionaires. It's to get a better grade of vagina. That's true, but I'll tell you, for the same reason... So, in other words, we are governed children. by our genitalia. Right, but we have a brain, too, and that allows us to take us beyond now, that. What our brain the allows brain us to do is to separate out the gold diggers the and the users and not give them what they want. That's, that's what I use my brain for, and that's what I'm training other guys to do. So you basically defi you, you define how good a woman is and by how well she reacts in bed. I I'll put it this way. That's my first impression, and first impressions are everything. And if she doesn't cut you a first impression within the first three dates... You're She's not going to be there out. beyond that. Correct. And on well, top of that, while I'm waiting, that. while I'm waiting those three dates, if I do wait that long, I have a list that I go to, the go-to girls, who I will go to in the meantime, who will never be the girlfriend, who will never be the permanent relationship, the ones who are there when I need them in a pinch. So these are the girls you're ever going to take home to mom and go, hey, look at what I'm going to spend the rest Correct. of Correct. So you have two different piles. That's right. You've got a pile of the ones you're going to play with, and then there's another standard for the ones that are going to be life mates. I, uh, well, I wouldn't call any of them life mates. The longest I was ever with anyone was 10 years. I don't know. I, I think we really do a disservice to younger males on this planet that are following us and listening to us when we let them know that... By the way, okay. they're not learning this from me. They already believe what I'm saying. The reason I am so popular with young males, Brett, is because I'm saying what they already think what they think but don't have enough experience to know they and just don't know how to get what they want and i am here to help them do that but i think you're going to shortchange them on the cerebral side of their life i i this is not a university you're help them, okay you're help them get laid but you're not going to help that's them get what they want this is not a university this is not a, a college of higher learning it's college of lower learning i thank you for that admission i again the lower extremities uh, to most young men are everything So who's going to train them in the higher extremities? That's not my problem. That's another classroom. Yeah, but that classroom doesn't have a microphone. That classroom doesn't have national exposure. Well, you know what? There's a reason. And that is because what I'm saying is a lot of appeal because it's what young men think. It is how they feel. And I'm expressing what they feel. Well, of course. Sex sells. Sex sells That's, on the radio as well. As my job is to sell. I don't know if you notice. I'm in the advertising business. It's my job right. to have the largest possible audience. So talking about postal carriers is definitely not going to pull people on your radio show. But if you no. want to start talking about how to help guys get laid, correct, that pulls in listeners. Look at the ratings. That's true. So, you, but do you honestly believe everything that comes out of your mouth? Yes, I do. Yes, I certainly do. Well, I think you need to throw some caveats in there when you start talking about what all guys. No, do I, I, I didn't use the word all. You did. I, I, I already conceded there's, there's a certain amount of people who are pussy whipped. There are a certain amount of people who are pussies in general. There are a certain amount of guys who are uh, hardcore religious fanatics. A uh, certain amount of guys with no game. I mean, uh, I never used the word all or every. You did. And there's a bunch of guys out there looking for a woman that's got more than just a body with a brain attached. Well, again, uh, most of them are uh, too old to have sex as a priority. Uh, or, uh, let's face it, they don't have any game. Having sex is as basic a primal need as eating and drinking. Yes. And guys want to know how to get what they need. Now, you live in Phoenix, don't you? Not anymore. 
I thought I heard you talking about no, Phoenix. I lived in Phoenix for th I lived in Phoenix for three years. I owned a house in Phoenix for thirteen years. I, I know it very well. I, I come back many uh, many a time. I have many friends in Phoenix, but I I don't currently live in Phoenix. Well, let's talk about a different weapon. We're allowed to carry arms down here. I know. Now, I'm sure there's a lot of times when most guys, because of that primal instinct, would like to just pull that piece out and drill some guy right through the head. But we don't do that. Why? Uh, again, we're not talking about committing illegal acts here. No, but we're talking about proper care and handling of weapons. Uh, but, but, but if that's not all there is to it, because believe me, if we didn't have laws against it, many people would use those weapons that way. That's true, but if we have the brain power to be able to keep that weapon in... It isn't about brain power. It's time. about survival. People don't want to be in the tent city. They don't want to be in prison. Okay. Well, that I'll is why they don't. Being, being if, a bad if the state of Arizona said, you know what? It's anarchy. Anybody wants to use a gun to enforce their own view of the law, go for it. People would. Okay, well, let's talk about a different prison then. Let's talk about the prison you get into when you get some girl pregnant and you end up in the marriage you don't want to be in. Oh, we talk about that all the time. You must be new to the show. Actually, I'm pretty new to the show. Yeah. Uh, and we talk about that all the time. We tell guys to wrap it. We tell guys to talk to women about whether they would have an abortion in case the women got pregnant. And uh, not to have sex with any woman who has any doubt about that. Like, I'm, I'm really... The statement that's running through my mind scares me because you're going to whip out that feminazi thing at me. But if we're just totally objectifying a woman as to how she performs, <laughs> where do we go? Again, uh, you know, we, you are so politically correct. How did you land in Phoenix, Arizona as a person so PC? Came out of Canada. Oh, okay. That explains. Well, they took me off the radio of using the word retard. Yes, I know. That's how uh, Canada is completely politically correct. You're absolutely right. Yeah, but you got to remember the, mo the normal Canadian still sitting back up there freezing their butt and paying too much in taxes. Uh, yeah, they're paying too much in taxes, but they keep electing the same morons who keep raising their taxes. Well, let's not get into that. That's one of the reasons I'm living there. I understand that. But uh, trust me when I tell you, Brett, I lived in Phoenix, Arizona 20 years ago. I know it well. And uh, you're around a lot of guys who don't agree with what you're saying. And maybe you've been there long enough to know. No, it wouldn't surprise me. You know, ASU has its own reputation as, as what it's known best for. Right. But best party school in America. Best party school, definitely. All right. If you uh, think we're not going to be out in Tempe any, uh, any minute now <laughs> and enjoying our celebrity in Arizona, but trust me, we are. So this isn't the medium to educate them. We're just going to keep on with Oh, that. I'm educating people. I'm educating men how to get laid without spending a lot of money or knocking up chicks. Which is what they want to know. Uh, I must be getting too old, Tom. I, I think you are. Hang on a second. James, what did you want to say to Brett? Hey, what's up, Dad? Not much, son. How are you? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Uh, <laughs> man, uh, I had a whole bunch of uh, arguments that I wanted to spew out at Brett, but uh, he's from Canada, so completely lost all of his credibility. But... Um, <laughs> Just kidding there, Brett. Just joking. So you live in Phoenix, Brett? Yes, I do. How long you been here? Eight years. Eight years? Okay. I'll tell you what, man. Um, I mean, there, there's a minuscule amount of things that I don't agree with that Tom says, but 99.9% uh, .9 of the time, he's right on target, man. But isn't that a little depressing that, that it, it gets down to that base level, and that's where we get marketed at? I am being marketed. Every time I turn around, I'm being marketed by an area below my belt, everything, everything, sex sells everything. I don't care if I'm standing in front of a urinal. Somebody's trying to sell me something. They're trying to sell it to me through sex. Well, that's the world we live in, though. Why do you mean? Why don't you just adapt to that? It's become the world we live in. I'm, you know, I'm almost as old as Tom is. Uh, right. It wasn't. It wasn't. I grew up in a world that was a little different. It has definitely become a world where sex sells on both sides of the fence, both for us and for them. Right. And that's become the base, the base currency now. And, you know, I'm thinking about my kids' kids. If we keep going this way, we're going to be having these conversations with 12-year-olds, or is the pendulum going to swing back the other way? Who knows? But one thing that won't change, young guys want to get laid. Some like it. 1-800-5800. You hurt a lot of people with your advice. Who am I hurting? You hurt a lot of people call in. Say, hey, you know what? Try this. Oh, yeah, just get the booty and the money. The Tom Likens Show.